let us pray. Mighty and eternal Father, we honor you and we ask for your continued blessings. We pray now that you would touch us again and you would speak to us in accents loud and clear. May the words of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Now, as I was saying, ladies and gentlemen, one of the things that is so important, especially in these times, is the whole matter of how businesses are re refocusing in the midst of a pandemic, how they have to look at what they were doing and uh, what they were accomplishing and how they have to change the strategy in an effort uh, to reach the people and to stay afloat. And uh, something that came up uh, over the last several weeks in the news was how they will be doing this morning Black Friday. You know, Black Friday, the Friday after Thanksgiving, it was the door buster sales and all the stuff that were going on. And because of the current pandemic, they cannot do the things they wanted to do. Now, uh, many of them, they are reimagining how they would really um, make their profit and really increase their sales and really reach the masses. And I was listening to a very, very interesting uh, way how one company was doing so and the company, they have decided that it's almost, uh, we now have Cyber Monday, but uh, Black Friday and Cyber Monday have sort of coincide uh, for this company and they have actually started uh, from yesterday, uh, they are last night to really open up all the deals that they have using uh, the technology available to us. And I thought about um, the church and its work in soul winning and how we can continue to remain uh, a viable entity uh, for reaching the lost for Christ because that is our business. You know, their business might be to sell shoes and handbags and refrigerator and television, but soul winning is the only business, ladies and gentlemen, of the church. And so this morning, we're going to talk a little bit about that and we're going to see how we can reach and how we can strategize and how we can touch lives for the kingdom. Now, if you're able to see my screen, uh, that's good. If not, that's fine too. I want to lay a, a biblical foundation because the, the word of God is still a lamp onto our feet and a light onto our path. And so the Bible says in Matthew chapter 4 and verse 19, then he said to them, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. Follow me and I will make you fishers of men. In John 4, 39, the Bible says, many of the Samaritans of that city believed in him because of the word of the woman who testified. He told me all that I ever did. Okay, the Bible continues, ladies and gentlemen, the Bible continues in John 4 and verse 35. The Bible says, don't you have a saying? It's still four months unto harvest. I tell you, open your eyes and look at the fields. They are ripe for harvest. Powerful text. In, in Matthew chapter 10 and verse 1, the Bible says, when he had called unto him his 12 disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. The Bible says, the Bible says, ladies and gentlemen, in Matthew chapter 10, uh, 5 through 10, these 12 Jesus sent forth and commanded them saying, go not into the way of the Gentiles, go not into the way of the Gentiles, 
and into any city of the Samaritans ye enter ye not, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as you go, preach, saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils. Freely you have received, freely give. Ah, oh, ladies and gentlemen, we are laying the biblical foundation for this morning's subject, soul winning or only business. What should you do? Provide neither gold nor silver nor brass in your purses nor scrip for your journey, neither two coats, neither shoes, nor yet staves, for the workman is worthy of his meat. The workman is worthy of his meat. Now, I want you to understand this morning that as we lay this biblical foundation, you ought to recognize, ladies and gentlemen, that we are talking about soul winning. We're talking about soul winning, which is our only business. The Bible says in John chapter 21 and verse 6 from the King James Version, and he said unto them, cast the net on the right side of the ship, and you shall find. They cast therefore, and now they were not able to draw it for the multitude of fishes. Question to you this morning, where are you casting your net? Are you in the right place? Matthew chapter 28, 19, the Bible says, the Bible says, go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. In Acts chapter 1 and verse 8, the Bible says, for this work of soul winning, you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and in in and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Ladies and gentlemen, soul winning is our only business. The Bible is abundantly clear that every person who is born, born into the kingdom is born to be a soul winner. It should be on every fiber of our being. It should be on our DNA to win souls for Jesus, to reach the lost at any cost. Ladies and gentlemen, let me give you some counsels from inspiration for soul winning so that you can realize that just as how businesses are strategizing, just as how they have started Cyber Monday from, uh, from Black Friday because there is no real Black Friday due to a pandemic, God's children, we have to strategize as to how we can win the lost for Christ. I wanna share with you a fundamental text a fundamental uh, quotation that I believe if we implement in the midst of a pandemic, God's message will be taken to many people and his kingdom will come soon. The, the, the pen of inspiration says in Ministry of Healing, page 143, Christ's method alone will give true success in reaching the people. Ladies and gentlemen, do you want to experience true success in reaching people in the era of a pandemic? Your answer is unequivocally yes. Well, listen to how the savior did his work of soul winning, his methodology, his approach. 
the Savior mingled with men as one who desired their good. Now, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, we might not uh, be able to physically mingle in the midst of a pandemic, but we can still connect because God will never be outdone when it comes to his work of evangelism. And God saw that there would be Zoom. God saw that there would be social media. As a matter of fact, he gave man the capacity and the ability uh, to do these great things. And God saw that in 2019, 2020, there would be a pandemic and this would be the means. And God said, let my children mingle, utilizing the very means that the enemy would even uh, use for his glory. I am going to show the world that I can use the Facebook and the Twitter and the Zoom and all these platforms to cause people from far and near to mingle, to connect, to come together, uh, to really reach each other. In the Savior, ladies and gentlemen, he mingled with men. He just did not mingle like everyone else, but he mingled with men as one who desired their good. The question this morning, do you desire the good of your neighbor, of your children, of your spouse? Do you really, 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 really want to see your neighbors saved in the kingdom, the people in your building, in your apartment complex, your neighbor? Do you really, 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 do you really, really, really want to see them saved? Can you see heaven with or without them? Or can't you see heaven? Are, are you seeing that we are on the cusp of eternity? The Savior mingled with men as one who desired their good. He showed his sympathy for them. This is a very terrible time. There are many individuals who are suffering loss. And we can show our sympathy for them. We can utilize the various technology. We can utilize the telephone. We can utilize text messages and various platforms to really show sympathy and to care for others. We can minister to their needs. We can stay right in our homes. We can send care packages. We can minister to the needs of others. We can partner with ministries such as this one to be a blessing to the nations. He, miss, he ministered to their needs. And guess what? He won their confidence. Then he bade them follow me. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to realize that our approach to soul winning our approach to soul winning is clearly delineated in the word of God and in the pen of inspiration. I want you to realize that the harvest of souls is to be secured only by deep, heartfelt intercession with the Lord of the harvest. Review and Herald, June 26, 1888. I want to repeat that because you see, people don't understand why there is a 777 prayer conference. Many of us don't realize what God is doing. Some of us we do, and some of us we need to catch the fire anew. Ladies and gentlemen, listen carefully. The harvest of souls is to be secured only. Did you catch that? The harvest of soul is to be secured only by deep, heartfelt intercession. And this is what we are engaged in. We have been praying morning and evening, day after day. People say, how do you do it? Seven days per week. How in hell does the devil do what he's doing? He's doing it. And he's doing a mighty good job at what he's doing. Well, God's people, we need to buckle our shoes. And we need to recognize that the harvest of souls, ladies and gentlemen, is to be secured only by deep, heartfelt intercession. With whom? With the Lord of the harvest. We need to cry out. We need to pray for our relatives. 
We need to not only pray, but we need to work. But I want you to realize that we need to intercede intercede it says intercession it does not talk about the wisdom of what we will do intercession ladies and gentlemen i can tell you somebody prayed for me i can tell you somebody prayed for you and that's why you are in the household of faith Oh, ladies and gentlemen, this morning, students all in this session, no one can be successful in so winning till he himself has settled the question of surrender to God. Oh, Jesus, help us, Holy Ghost. Did you hear that, ladies and gentlemen? Not a single one of us on this conference this morning will ever be successful in soul winning till we have settled the question, is your all on the altar of sacrifice slain? You see, we some of us, we have not given ourselves to Jesus 40 years in the church and we still not surrendered to Jesus. And you know how you know? Your mannerism is still awful. Your behavior, your connection with Jesus Christ, you're rough, you're coarse, you're uncouth, you're unchristlike. And ladies and gentlemen, you know me. I am going to let you know it just like it is in love surrender to Jesus Christ. You could be able to preach like Paul. You could be able to pray like an angel. You could be able to put together the best program. You could be able to do all the wonderful things that you have done over the last 40 or 50 years in the household of faith or five days or five years. If you are not totally settled on the question of surrender to God, who is your master this morning? Who is the person driving you this morning? Is it self? Is it the desire to be recognized and rewarded? Is it that if somebody does not give you money or if somebody does not pay you for what you're doing or if somebody does not support you, you will not be a soul winner? Every successful soul winner, ladies and gentlemen, would have been surrendered to the Lord of the harvest. We are individually to put on the Lord Jesus Christ. You know why we have the problem in the church we're having right now when nobody, it seems as if everybody is doing everything else but the work of the ministry? Because Jesus Christ, we are not covered with Jesus Christ. We are not covered with Jesus Christ, ladies and gentlemen. We must put on the Lord Jesus Christ. Put on Christ, his character, his matchless charms. Put on Jesus Christ. And how do you put on Christ? You must be surrendered to him. This is the heart. I'm getting to the heart of evangelism, which is evangeliving. If you have known me over the years, I have spoken definitively that evangelism is really evangeliving. To each of us, he must become wisdom he must become righteousness. He must become sanctification he mu and redemption. You know, when our faith lays hold upon Christ as our personal savior, we shall place him before others in a new light. People are going to see you, man, and they're going to wonder, and you're going to not only uh, sit and wait for them to see you, you're going to love your neighbor as yourself. You're going to be kind to the stranger, even when you are in this medium. Whatever you do, ladies and gentlemen, you are going to put on Jesus Christ. People are going to see the wisdom of God is in you. In the workplace, you are going to look different. You're going to sound different. You're not engaged in the small talk. Ladies and gentlemen, you win our faith, lay hold upon Christ, our personal Savior. We shall place him. Him, not yourself, him, Jesus, before others in a new light. And you know, when the people behold Christ, oh, hallelujah. Just when the people see Jesus, they will not wrangle over doctrines. They're not going to wonder whether or not the Sabbath is to be kept. What about the state of the dead? They're going to see Jesus Christ clothed in regular clothing coming into the workplace. When the people behold Christ through you, Christ 
in you, Christ in your behavior, Christ in everything you say and do. They will not wrangle over doctrines. They will flee to him for pardon, for purity, and for eternal life. Can you imagine if you and I would wholly put on Jesus Christ? Can you imagine that we would not be worrying about how we're going to even strategize in an evangelist in a, in, a, in, a, in a pandemic? Ladies and gentlemen, Christ would become the sum and subject of all we do. I'm just sharing, ladies and gentlemen, some simple tips that have worked for me over the years on how we can do business in a pandemic. I want you to know the gospel shop, if you please, is still open. Are you hearing me this morning? The gospel has not lost its teeth or its power even in the midst of a pandemic. And if you ask me, it should be more powerful because here, Manuscript Releases, volume seven, page 180, we are living in the last days. Does anybody out there know what time is it? it is? Ladies and gentlemen, it is the last days. And if you did not know, you will now know on this Friday morning. Is this the last Friday morning in November? Yes, it is. We are living in the last days when the truth must be spoken, when in reproof, and warning, it must be given to the world, irrespective of consequences. If there are some who will become offended and turn from the truth, we must bear in mind that there were those who did the same in Christ today. When the greatest teacher of the world has the world has ever known spoke the truth, many of his disciples become offended. And the Bible says. They walked no more with him. We, not, we must not be afraid, ladies and gentlemen, because the offense we cause is an offense for the truth. And it's not an offense, Lord, that will lead people to hate you for your behavior. No, no, no. You're not going to be harsh and uncouth and rude and unkind. You're going to put on Christ, his matchless charms, even his righteousness. So the reproof will not so much come, uh, say, you are fighting doctrinal divide. The reproof will be that they see the living and personal Jesus so exalted. And as you present him, they will be reproved not so much by you, but ladies and gentlemen, by the message that you present. When truth is spoken, truth pierces the heart. Truth will transform lives. Truth will be a blessing to every person. It might anger them at first, but guess what? You're gonna declare, oh, this is the truth. And so ladies and gentlemen, as we prepare uh, to enter into the next phase of this morning's program, I just wanna share a few basic tips. Number one, Nike says, just do it. And I want to say to you this morning, just do it. Ladies and gentlemen, individual work is simply telling others of your experience of Christ's love so that they may share it. Principle number one, just do it. Just do it this morning. Somebody type in the chat, just do it. Just do it. Just do it. Just do it. You, you, you see your friends, your neighbors, you, you see your loved one, just do it. Just share the love of Christ. Number two, just do it now. The best way to begin this work is to begin. Did you, realize that? Did you realize that, ladies and gentlemen? The best way to begin evangelism and soul winning is, is to begin. Just begin. And the best time to start is now. There is no better time than the present. Now. You don't know. You see people go in the hospital one day and tomorrow they're dead. You see bright lights go out. You see things are happening. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, I want you to just do it and I want you to just do it now. Don't wait for tomorrow. Don't say, okay, I came off the prayer conference this morning and I was impressed and the word touched my heart and I'm going to wait until Sunday. I'm going to start on Sunday. No, no. No, no, start this morning, right now. The best way to begin, 
This work is the beginning and the best time to start is now. Uh, the next thing I want you to realize as a tip is don't wait on feelings. If you're waiting to feel the desire uh, to do the work of the ministry, to witness to others, you will never feel the desire. Because guess what? The heart of man is desperately wicked above all things. I'm just telling you the truth. Or feelings or, or lack of feelings for this work are not to be consulted in doing the work. There are days that I don't feel like being a part of sharing and disseminating the gospel. There are days when I don't feel like preaching. I don't feel like praying. I don't feel like teaching. I don't feel like doing anything. I just want to roll over in my bed, cover the pull the sheet over my head and sleep. I'm tired of all that. I don't feel like. But you know what? I, am, I have learned to stop looking towards feelings and just do what you have to do. Ladies and gentlemen, the next tip I want to bring to your attention, don't sit and worry about your inabilities. I know, I know, <laughs> Pastor, hey, I, I can't, I can't preach like you. I can't, I can't sing like Nightingale. I, I don't know how to talk. I, I don't have no skills like Moses, right? Yes, and he led Israel, right? Lord, I, um, I have a stutter. Lord, I can't speak. I, I, the Lord will send help. Don't sit and worry about your inabilities. Ladies and gentlemen, you will never be a T.D. Jakes. You will never be a, a E.E. E. Cleveland. You will never be a Bradford. You will never be a C.D. Brooks. You are you, uniquely created for the gospel ministry right where you are. Don't sit and talk about and worry about your inabilities. Personal shortcomings should never deter us from soul winning. Ladies and gentlemen, if God could use a donkey, he can surely use you and I. Don't worry about your inabilities, your, your shortcomings. That should never deter you from soul winning, ladies and gentlemen. All you have to do is to give yourself, Lord, I surrender to you. And you surrender yourself and you give full attention to the person we're trying to reach. We must seek to know the person, personal relationship, get to know people, man, just be nice. You know, there was a man in my, in my, in my, in my home country, in my community. He, he always may, makes this statement. He always says, just be nice. Just be nice. Ladies and gentlemen, we, will, we must seek to know people. Determine which method to use. The bait of honest commendation. Are you listening to me this morning? When you meet people uh, and when you, you see something that you can positively affirm, it will go a far way. It's called honest commendation. Hi, neighbor, how are you? Nicely kept lawn. God bless you, man. I appreciate how you take care of the lawn. Honest commendation. It will often work in reaching men and women. Hi, you wear that well looking good. The children look healthy and they're looking fine. You know, honest commendation. Find the things that you, oh, I saw you put up your Christmas tree. Beautiful. Honest commendation. Ladies and gentlemen, show that salvation is important for this world and the next. And make the way of salvation simple to understand. I want you to realize, ladies and gentlemen, this morning, I want you to realize uh, some basic tips. Show interest in the interests of the person you are talking to. If they're a baker, talk about baking. If they're a singer, talk about music. If they're a fisherman, talk and learn a little bit about fish fishing. Ladies and gentlemen, avoid getting into discussions on denominational differences. That's not what you are there. You are there to preach Christ. When they see Jesus lifted up, they're going to ask, so, so what day did Jesus worship on again? I don't know how I get, you're going to point them to the word. 
and you're going to show them and they're going to follow Jesus. Avoid settling questions of another person's duty before God. Oh, you should do this. You should do that. You should do this. You should do that. This is how you need to dress. This is how you need to look. This is how you need to sound before you can be. No, ladies and gentlemen, it's not for you. Your duty is to catch the fish. It's the duty of Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit to scale them and to gut them and to prepare them for the great marriage supper of the Lamb. Your duty, ladies and gentlemen, you, all you are is a fishers of men. Conviction to the truth and the joy of our message is the greatest strength in this work. Are you hearing me this morning? When you are convicted, some of us, we're not convicted about what we believe in. We, we don't know where we are. We are just all over the place. But conviction to the truth. You must be convicted. If you believe it and you're living it, it's going to be transformational. Ladies and gentlemen, by all means, avoid argument. You see this? This is what I believe and that is. Ladies and gentlemen, avoid the argument. Preach Christ. The Bible is the soul winner's main equipment, but it is to be used at the right time. Timing is so important, ladies and gentlemen, in evangelism. Timing. Sometimes you don't need to say anything. It's not time yet. Keep your mouth shut and pray. The Bible is the soul winner's main equipment, but it is to be used at the right time. Don't use the Bible as a beating stick over the heads of, oh yes, you see, the commandments are to be, are to be kept and you're breaking them. Bam. And you, what you're doing, you're nailing them. You're nailing the nail in your own coffin and in the coffin of the person because you are destroying the influence of Christ. But ladies and gentlemen, when the time is right, when the fullness of time was come, Jesus Christ came. Timing is important and the right way. If you use your sword in the incorrect way, you might cut off the neck of a soul. Are you with me? Some of us, we, we leave scars. When we are done, we destroy people in the process. But soul winning is recognizing that the Bible is the soul winner's main equipment. But it is to be used at the right time and the right way. You know how many individuals I've talked to and I've never opened the Bible, ladies and gentlemen, to them before they never went into a Bible. I, I just talk about Jesus. And I talk about the, what they want to talk about. Ladies and gentlemen, after a while, the opportunity will come and the Holy Spirit will guide you in the truth. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to pause on this slide, but I hope the information this morning on soul winning, this Black Friday, soul winning, our only business, will be a source of encouragement to you. Uh, one of the next tips I, I want to share is the most powerful story of Christ's work is my story. Don't miss that, ladies and gentlemen. Your story, we all have a story, a story to tell. Oh, remember the woman at the well. What did she say? Did she go and preach a sermon? No, 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 no. She went and she said, come see a man who told me all about my condition. Is not this man the Christ? Is not this man the Lord? And the Bible says the whole city came and they came and ladies and gentlemen, they learned about Jesus. The most powerful story of Christ is my story. You know, Christ's method is universal. Every nation, every kindred, every tongue, every people can appreciate it. Everybody, the white, the Blacks, the Hispanics, the, the, you name it, ladies and gentlemen, Asians, you believe people. Let me tell you, utilize Christ's method. Appreciate people. Show Christ. Put on Christ. Christ's method, it's unbiased. It doesn't show partiality or favoritism. The method is for black. The method is for white. The method is for Chinese. So when the church talks about, oh, we are not reaching these people, we are not, ladies and gentlemen, you can reach 
all people if you utilize Christ's method alone. You know, Christ's method, it will unify. It will unify. The method of Christ will unify people from all walks of life. So you do not now have ethnic directed churches. You have intergenerational churches and inter-ethnic. You have churches, ladies and gentlemen, that are blended mm -hmm. congregations. So whites will come, blacks will be there, all of God's children, it will be the United Nations, God's people working together for the salvation of souls. And don't believe on your job that your Caucasian friends, your Asian friends, they are not interested in Jesus. They are very much interested in him. Many of them are excited to hear about him and want to come to know him. But because of your persuasion, you might say, oh, they don't need. But ladies and gentlemen, they do. The Savior mingled with men as one who desired their good. And next time we are together, we're going to talk about this. Matthew chapter 4, 23 and 24. I just want to leave you with this text this morning as I prepare to close. And Jesus went about all Galilee. If it was written in our time, it would say, and Jesus went about all the cities and the towns of this modern day world about wherever you're living new york city and jesus went about all new york city the bronx teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people and his fame went throughout all syria nothing is wrong with being famous jesus his fame the kind of fame he had the, the prayer line needs to be famous. People need to hear the fame of what we are doing needs to go far and wide. And they brought unto him all sick people that were taken with diverse diseases. Why do you think there is a strong emphasis on health, healing, and restoration on this conference? Because we are following Christ's method. They brought to him, bring all the sick people to the conference every Tuesday morning, every time we bring them that were taken in diverse diseases and torments and those which were possessed with devils and those which were lunatic and those that had the palsy and he healed them. My friends, the purpose of this conference, this ministry is to be a safe haven, a place where those possessed tormented, have diverse diseases, sinners who are broken can find hope. Oh, this morning, is soul winning your only business? Well, if it is, I want you now to go where he wants you to go. As we listen to the song of dedication, ladies and gentlemen, I want you to purpose that you will go today. You will do it now. You will do it through the power of the Holy Spirit. And Jesus Christ will be with you. I'll go where you want me to go. <laughs>